How's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome back to Code Wars. So at the moment, I'm 7Q. Let's try to reach 6Q by tonight. We're going to see how we go. So going inside this tab right here, I've got the first challenge for myself tonight. So it says here, um, it's referring to a like system like, uh, for example, Facebook, where um, if a post has likes on it, you can see, for example, it might say no one likes this, Peter likes this, Jacob and Alex like this, and Max, John and Mark like this. And essentially, once you reach uh, four people or more, it converts into only two people and then it says and two others. So I had a read of this prompt just a minute ago before I started recording and the first thing that came in my head was I think in a situation like this where you've got a set criteria, this might surprise people, but you actually may be better off keeping it simple. So we might actually have separate blocks of conditions here that are just going to return very explicit strings, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's have a look here. We have likes and we have names. So of course, we're going to be passed in. Uh, so we're going to be provided with an array of strings for each name. And I'm going to take that really explicit approach because I think sometimes if you're a developer, you don't need to overcomplicate it and be smart about your solution. It really isn't a, um, it's really not a, a sign of not being, smart enough. It really is, I think, in most situations, actually a professional approach. So just keep it simple. So let's have a look here. We're going to say if names.length is equal to zero, then we're going to simply return and say uh, no one likes this. Okay. Now, if names.length is equal to one, okay, I might use the triple equals here for a type strict comparison. In this case here, we're going to say return, then use template strings and pass in here the first name. As an example, Peter likes this. So we're going to say here uh, names at index zero being the first name, then say likes this. Okay. Now, if your length is, uh, you know, more than, sorry, if it's two, um, then we can say uh, Jacob and Alex like this. And I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. So we're going to say name one and name two likes this. So names at index one. And the other special case or the next one is for three names. So we can just say here, if the length is three, then of course display this one. Now it looks like for the two names versions actually like and not likes because um, I think that makes more grammatical sense instead of a likes. So let's also make this a like for the three name variation. So we're going to say name zero and one with a comma. So comma and we're going to say names at index two like this. And then of course in the other situation where you have four or more, we're going to, of course, display the first two with the comma and then add this one. So I'm going to copy this one here and just say, so zero and one, then we have and and two others. So this here is going to be something others and it's going to be the length of the array subtracted by two. So names.length minus two. Okay, let's test this and see how we go. Hopefully we get a positive result and we do. So again, I think, you know, my main explanation behind this approach, once again, is because it keeps it simple and, and not as complicated. And that's because, look, if you've got this case here, you need to worry about whether or not you show a comma or if you show an and and things like that. So that kind of logic can be quite cumbersome to include in your function. So let's attempt this and see how we go. Hopefully we get... Um, all correct, and we do perfect. Let's let's submit that and see. I'm curious to see if anybody else has the same logic um, for a for a question like this. So let's have a look. Okay, so again, yeah, people are doing this. So 
case zero, return this, one, return this, and so on. And it does it really explicitly. Um, a lot of people actually did this. So I was, I was kind of um, expecting some smarts to happen. I mean, look, to be honest, seeing a smart solution is definitely interesting and it's, it's good to see and read and learn from. But again, like I said, it's, it's sometimes simpler like this. Now, this is definitely interesting. So this person has used a template for each different variation and that's actually really smart. So I actually like this one quite a bit. So I think this is my favorite solution. It's got a bunch of clevers. I might actually start liking these. So I'll, I'll actually make that a, a, a clever reactor, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, a lot of people doing the same thing. Um, fair enough, it's good. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Now these might get challenging. I'm moving up a little bit now. So let's see how we go. Okay, let's have a look. Does, fair enough, um, a narcissistic number or Armstrong number is a positive number, which is the sum of its own digits, each raised to the power of the number of digits in a given base. In this kata, we will restrict ourselves to decimal, base 10. So if we take 153, let's have a look, which is narcissistic, 1 to the power of 3 plus 5 to the power of of three plus three to the power of three equals one plus that plus that. Okay, so essentially you need to just take each individual number and then, you know, give it to the power of whatever the length is of the uh, total number. And that's going to give you your final result once you add them all together. Okay, <clears throat> your code must return true or false depending on whether the given number is narcissistic in base 10. Interesting. So, how do we know if it's narcissistic? Uh, it's a positive number, which is the sum of its own digits, each raised to the power of... So why is it not narcissistic? Why is this one not narcissistic? Uh, one, five, three. That's interesting. So that's really interesting. So that means, oh, okay. So your starting number, if it's the same as your resulting number, then it is considered to be narcissistic. Whereas if it's not, then it's not. Okay. Interesting. So let's, let's, let's train up here and see how we go. So I think what we know we need is the number of digits. So how do we get the number of digits? Well, we can convert the number to a string and then get the string length. But I'm sure there might be a smarter way to figure that out. Something to do with like, if you use division, maybe you can work it out. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I think that's probably not the main part of the solution. So I'm just going to get the string length and see how we go. So I'm going to say here, uh, const length is equal to, then use the trick where you do string plus value. Then you say dot length, and that's going to give me the string. Length. So basically, yeah, this, this plus is going to convert the number into a string. And then once we have that string here, we, with the result of that expression, dot length is going to give me, of course, the number of digits. Okay, fair enough. So we got, we, we have the length here. Now, of course, we need to now extract every single uh, number from that and that, that starting number, and then add that result together once we power it by the length. So it might actually be worth converting the number to a string first, just to have it ready to then use, because we need to, of course, loop over it and, you know, get that result back. And I might even use uh, array reduce here to actually do that. So let's say const uh, string equal to string plus value. Then say length is equal to string dot length. It's not going to be a short solution. It's going to be very uh, explicit with every variable and, and so on. So now we have this. Let's convert the value into a array. 
That way we can actually use a reduce on it and therefore work out the total for every single uh, number and then of course compare it to the original. So let's say here array dot from to convert the string into an array then say dot reduce. Now the reducer function is going to begin with a zero for the total and we're actually going to return here and say is the resulting value of this reduce equal to the passed in value and because JavaScript uh, allows for loose comparisons with double equals we're going to take advantage of that and actually just compare this string with the number. So let's now work on the reducer function which we're going to pass in because like I kind of just mentioned here, uh, actually my mistake, so let me just clarify here. This reduce method is actually going to give us a number as the result. It's going to be the total, for example, 153. So we can do a strict comparison here against the passed in value, the number. Cool. So what is this reducer function going to look like? Well, it's going to take in uh, the total and the current number, we're going to call this n. And within here, it's going to do what? Well, it's going to have to convert the number into a, sorry, it's going to have to convert the string version of the number into a number so we can perform calculations on it, then power it by, uh, in this case, 3. However, math.pow may allow us to pass in numeric strings. I might just quickly uh, do a search here for math.pow in JavaScript. And let's have a look at what this does. So it only accepts numbers. I wonder if it's going to allow us to pass in a string here that is, that can, you know, that can be uh, converted to a number. Let's test it in the console. Let's say math dot pow and pass in a string and then say two okay so it still works that's fine let's go with that so we're going to say here return math dot pow pass in and power it by the string length and we're going to also add the total to that so total plus math dot pow um, and we're going to say is this equal to the value then yes cool and that's fine let's test this and see how we go here and we get positive test results. Now I might just take a moment here to actually simplify the code. Well, not simplify, but reduce the amount of lines. I know I did mention at the start I want to keep this explicit, but I think in this case here we can probably um, make it a little bit shorter. So first off, I think we can probably, because these two constants are only used uh, once we can probably just get rid of them. So let's return array dot from and then pass in that the string conversion then use uh, Okay, so we actually need the length here. Let's keep the string version and then say str dot length instead and we're also going to replace this total with t and then just move this up to this line to essentially give us this kind of one liner. So um, yeah, we're saying return array from string, reduce, pass in those there and we'll test it again and we get the same result. Let's try that and see how other people have done it. I think my solution is probably going to be a little bit rarer. I don't think people are going to use this technique. I'm sure we're going to see math.pow and we're going to see array reduce, but I'm curious to see how people convert to a string and how people also work at the length of um, the whole number. So let's have a look here. Okay, so the same thing there. Okay, so using dot split to convert it into an array. So the exact same thing, but using split as opposed to array dot from. And we actually get the exact same answer as what I had. So that's definitely interesting there. I didn't expect that. Um, this one here is using the double asterisk to convert it to, sorry, to work out the, um, the power to. That's cool. And then of course, reduce once again with a few pluses thrown in there. 
That's fair enough. So I think, yeah, it's pretty similar to the top end. So I'm happy with that. Um, you can't complain about that. So I might actually leave it there for tonight. I did, I did two questions. I'm sure as we continue to, to, to work on um, these challenges, I'm going to get more complicated questions in the future, but we'll see how we go. Um, that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. Uh, if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.